Coming up on another episode of Through the Turnstiles, we visit Coventry's ground, where the Birmingham City away end beat the living shit out of this sign. Coventry fans just enjoying life and football at the possible opportunity of playoffs. <laughs> One way of saying don't bite the hand that feeds you. Four stewards trying to wrestle a pitch invader. When you're so bored, you just have to go on your phone during your shift. And the least popular shift for any policeman. Coventry City Football Club, also known as the Sky Blues, a medieval city that was once bombed to smithereens during the Blitz, now regarded as the city of culture. A club that was once ever so present in the first division and in the Premier League. They even won the FA Cup against my beloved team Tottenham Hotspur in 1987. But this club has been through its fair share of mess. On August 20th, 2005, the Sky Blues played their first ever game at their new stadium, the Rioch Arena but it seems that stadium has caused that club a lot of problems. Located a few miles out of Coventry and difficult to get to, deemed as unsafe and filling the club with financial issues even to this present day. Coventry have had to have played games at Northampton and even at Birmingham's ground St Andrews to share their ground. They've had so many issues with that stadium. Funnily enough, I will be with the Birmingham City away end. Coventry recently promoted as League One playoff winners to the championship, now find themselves in the playoffs. They have to win their remaining games to get the opportunity of playoffs and promotion to the Premier League, whereas Birmingham are safe from relegation. It always gets to these stages of the championship that get exciting and I am intrigued to visit this stadium of 32,753 capacity, where this technically West Midland derby fixture has been a sellout. Let's get going to the Coventry Building Society Arena. We begin today with an Uber journey. To drop us off at the train station at Marston Green. Unfortunately, it's not a direct route, but it doesn't take too long either, so you might as well take that. I mean, like I said in the introduction, this is a West Midlands derby, technically speaking, so it's really not a long journey. I can't lie, I've had to travel far away, even within the London zone, but this by far has been the easiest journey, and we have arrived at Coventry train station. Move out of my way. That's a Birmingham flag, and you can't see from the front, but this kid is dressed up as Ali G. And just like that, we have arrived at Coventry. Coventry has been regarded as a city of culture, spotting a cathedral that was built during the medieval period. A quick stop for a pint, I mean, why not? Followed by an Uber journey where we have to get to the ground, which is literally in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I never understand it why people think it's even a good idea to locate these stadiums when it's not even in the city boundaries. I'm looking at the stadium, to be honest, not impressed with what I look at so far from the outside. It's just giving me vibes of a shopping center. That's just my opinion in my neutral ground hopping perspective. But obviously, of course, for Coventry fans, they've been through so much. I would just be happy if I even had a home to begin with. <laughs>
very sure it hit their hand. Sorry, hit their hand. Well, that's a penalty for Coventry then.
Jesus. Coventry were by far the better team for the day. The home atmosphere was definitely rocking. Not really a fan of its stadium, if I've got to be honest, and it's quite difficult to get to. And as you can see, it's quite a nightmare for police and crowd trouble. It was actually a lot worse off camera, I do have to say. But I do want to wish the best of luck for Coventry. We might see you in the Premier League next season. They just need to win their next game. Good luck, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of a series that I call Through the Turnstiles. Just yeah.